Can you imagine like not having to avoid certain types of projects because you don't want to weave in a billion ends? <clears throat> Temperature blankets. Okay, that last part may have been a little dramatic, but in all seriousness, weaving in ends is a total nuisance. They never seem to stay hidden, no matter how much you try. Now this little hack isn't new. In fact, it's probably been around as long as I have. But if I've managed to miss this little technique, this little hack, this little life saver, time saver, it's probably more accurate. Now it goes without saying, you'll do this whenever you're ready to join a new skein of yarn. Sometimes that happens in the middle of your project because you ran out of yarn. Sometimes it happens at the end of a row because you wanna change colors. And in both of those scenarios, you'll treat it just slightly different. So let's look at the easier of the two. When you run out of yarn in your project and you need to add a new skein, it's the same color, same yarn, all that stuff. Now I'm actually gonna use two different colors here so you can see, you know, the steps a little bit better. With your two ends kind of like this, take one color or one of the skeins and tie a knot around the other strand. Then tie a knot with the other end around the other strand of yarn. Here's the cool part. When you pull both of those sides, it slides the two knots together so that anytime there is tension on either one of these sides, it's just reinforcing the knot. But here's the best part. You're looking at this saying, hey, I've still got two tails here, but no. You can trim these tails all the way down to the knot. So the harder you pull, the tighter that knot is gonna be and it won't break. Trust me, I've, I've tried. I really did try and I actually broke yarn before I broke the knot. So that's the easier of the two scenarios. Let's be honest, you might only add a skein of yarn a couple times during a project. Maybe for a blanket, you're adding, you know, a lot more, but it's nothing compared to a project like a temperature blanket that has tons and tons of color changes. That's where this technique will really save you a lot of time. Now the trick to the magic knot at the end of a row is to hide the knot within the last stitch. So here's how I do that. Work the last stitch and pull up just slightly on the hook and then trim that loop. Then pull the strand here on the back to undo just the last stitch. Now with a new color, tie a knot around the color to be changed and slide the knot up next to the stitch. Now this tail will be a lot smaller, but do your best to tie a knot around the new color. Then pinch the old color right next to the stitch and pinch the new color and pull to slide the two knots together. Then just rework the last stitch. You may have to fiddle with this last stitch as well to get the knot hidden within the stitch. So tightening your tension or loosening your tension will usually help. I honestly don't mind the little knot. It feels like a small price to pay to save some time and save some frustration from fussing with ends that are just gonna come out anyways. But I do realize this knot will be a compromise for some people. So if you can't bear the thought of having a knot within your project, then here are five simple tips to weave in ends better. I'll see you there. It really does prevent me from wearing and enjoying a lot of my makes because I know that eventually they'll start poking their little heads out and I'll have to trim it down and then keep trimming every time it happens and eventually you'll trim the entire thing. Then what? 